Hi guys, welcome to the 8th episode of Eat the Blocks. Today we're going to study another aspect of inheritance, which is polymorphism. Polymorphism wasn't invented by Solidity, it already exists in many other programming languages and probably that some of you already know it. With polyformism, oh, polymorphism, sorry, <laughs> this is such a complicated word, I, I can't get it right. So, with polymorphism, uh, what you can do is, if you have a child contract that inherits from a parent contract, uh, it can uh, redefine some function of this parent contract and, and change their behavior. So this is very useful, uh, but it's not very easy to understand. So uh, I will show you some example, and I hope that it will be a little, bit, a little bit more clear for you how it works. We will also study what is the super keyword. So before we start the topic of this episode, first we're going to answer the challenge that I talked about during the last episode. So for the last episode, we had four contracts. The first one was my contract, and it inherited from kid one and kid two and parent, which are three other contracts. So kid two here inherited from parent, kid one also inherited from parent, and we have parent, which doesn't inherit from any contract. So if you remember, before we put uh, the parent here, we had no problem. So if I save my file, uh, my linter here is going to stop. But if I add parent, my linter is going to tell me that there is a problem and I will not be able to compile this project. Um, so here, if I uh, hover over this keyword contract here, um, the linter is going to give me some help. So what does it say? Linearization of inheritance graph impossible. Wow, sounds complicated. So I'm going to explain. So actually, when you have multiple inheritance, the order of the inheritance matter. So if you write like this, kid one, kid two parent, basically what you're saying is first, my contract inherit from kid one, then it inherit from kid two, but the function of kid two will override the function of kid one. And then the function of parent will override the function of kid two. But there is a problem because kid1 and kid2 also inherit from parent. So when you say this, it also means kid1 inherit from parent and kid1 a function inside kid1 will also override the function inside parent. And the same for kid2. So basically, in other words, here you say, hey, kid1 is going to override parent. But here, line 15, you're saying parent is going to override kid1. So this is contradictory. So Solidity cannot solve this and that's why it gives us this error. So be careful when you have multiple inheritance. If one of your parents already inherit from a common ancestor, you cannot add this ancestor after your contract here on the right. So here we're going to remove parent and it's going to solve our problem. Okay, so let's switch to our terminal. So with the truffle command line installed, we're going to run the truffle init command. So I've already run this command, so I already have all the folders and the files. So you can check what you have with ls and you should see something like this. The second thing we're going to do is to use the truffle command to create a new contract. Truffle create contract my contract. So far, for those who followed the previous episode, this should sound pretty familiar. And now open your text editor and open the contract that we just created. So we're going to get rid of this constructor function. And like for the previous episode, we're going to add three contracts. One will be the parent contract. And the two other one will be kid one and kid two. So we're going to make kid1 inherit from parent and kid2 also inherit from parent and my contract inherit from both kid1 and kid2. So, so far it's exactly the same thing as what we've done in the previous episode, but uh, we're going to do something a little bit different um, in a parent. So, we're going to create a variable of type uint, so it's going to be an integer that we're going to call contract type 
and we're going to set it to zero. And then we're going to create three functions in parent. So the first one will be foo. And it's going to return a uint variable. And each side, it's going to very simply return this contract type variable. And we're going to add two more functions that do exactly the same thing, but you will understand why we're doing this. Okay, so instead of foo, it's going to be a bar. And that one, instead of foo, it's going to be pass. Okay, so we have our contract, uh, par our parent contract with one variable and three function. And now we're going to move on to the kid one uh, contract. So for the kid one contract, it's going to have two function, bar and bass. So we're going to copy over those two like this. And it's also going to have one variable of type uint, but this time we're going to set it to uint1. And finally, the kit2 contract is going to have just one function and it's going to be pass. Okay, so we copy this over and we also copy this variable here. And we were going to set this variable to zero. Uh, sorry, to two. Oh, okay. Um, and finally, in my contract, we're going to call all this function. So uh, the first function that I will uh, create it will be called call foo. And it's going to return a variable of type uint. And it's going to very simply return the result of the call to foo. And uh, because we inherit from kid1 and kid2, through the chain of inheritance, we will be able to access foo. That is defined in several contracts. So foo is, um, no, sorry, foo is only defined here in the parent contract. So we what we should see is this contract type here. So it should, it should be set to zero. And the second function we're going to create in my contract is call bar. So bar is also going to call a function. And it's going to be bar very simply. And as you guys probably guessing, we're also going to create another function called call pass. Okay, that's going to call pass. So why are we doing all of these functions? So basically, I want to explain how um, polymorphism work by demonstrating which function it's calling. So here, uh, we, we already said that we're expecting this uh, call to foo to uh, return zero because uh, zero is the, the value of this contract type variable here in the parent contract. However, when we're going to call the bar function, it's not so obvious because bar is defined twice. So bar is defined here in the parent contract, but bar is also defined here in the kid one contract. So which one of those two will be called? Well, we will see it thanks to the value that we will have returned. When you run across this situation, basically the rule is that the function to be resolved will, will belong to the contract that is the most derived. So it, it sounds complicated, but basically it's the higher uh, in the inheritance hierarchy. So here what happened in my contract is at first I inherit from kid one and after I inherit from kid two, but kid one itself, it also inherit from parent. So in the chain of inheritance, kid one is after parent. So what we should see when we call the bar function here is that it should actually resolve to the function that belong to kid one here. So the value that will be returned should be one. And by the same reasoning, when we go into in my contract, when we go into call uh, the function, which is bas, bas is defined in three places, it's defined, let me scroll up to the parent contract. So it's defined here in the parent contract, bas. It's defined in kid1 here, 
And it's also defined in the kit to contract here. So in this case, the most derived contract is kit to. So the call to bash should resolve to this function here and the return value should be two. Okay, so our three call should result in respectively uh, zero, one and two. Okay, so we're going to check this very simply by going back to the console. Oh, okay, so first, before we launch the truffle develop command, we quickly need to create our migration file. So truffle command migration and the name of our migration is going to be my contract. Okay, and uh, then I'm going to open this migration file, but first um, I'm going to copy over the migration that is uh, already, oh, sorry, it's not the right file. Migration, that one. I'm going to copy over the migration provided by the Truffle framework and I'm going to modify it just a little bit. Migration, so this is exactly that as what we did during the previous episode. Okay, oh, actually, it seems like I already prepared this contract, uh, this migration file before, so I don't need to change anything. So here I have my variable my contract that equals uh, this line uh, artifact. It's a, a truffle construct and it's going to require the name of my contract. And then I'm going to pass this my contract variable to this deploy function here, line four. And it's going to deploy my smart contract to my local test net. Okay, so back to our console. So now we're ready to launch the truffle develop command and it's going to spin up our local test net and it's going to start the truffle console okay so now we're ready to run the migration so we're going to type migrate okay and now we're going to um, have a, a variable that points to our contract instance so we're going to use the uh, my contract variable that was injected by truffle then we're going to call the deploy method that's going to return a promise and we're going to uh, catch the result of this promise uh, like this. So let's just call the, the result and we're going to uh, assign this i variable to inst. Okay, mm, is it correct? Uh, oops, it's not correct. Okay, now it works. Um, so now we can use this inst variable uh, and we're going to call our first method, which is call foo. So call foo and we're expecting zero. And oops, why it's not working? Um, so here, uh, basically the problem is like, I want to call this function, but um, the result is a transaction receipt. So it means that Truffle has done a transaction, but it's not what I want. So let me go back to my contract and, and I'm going to correct this. So the reason why uh, Truffle is trying to do a transaction is because I forgot the constant keyword here. So let me add this constant, constant and constant, okay. And now back to our truffle console and we're going to rerun the migration again because our contract has changed. Uh, but this time we need to set the reset flag because we changed the contract. Okay, and now we're going to uh, again um, have our inst variable point to our updated instance on the local test nets, my contract deployed and then I inst point to I. Okay, so now if I call foo like this, I should have zero. And here, so we return this big number thing, but the result that we want is actually here. So it's zero. Okay, so so far so good. So now how about, how about the bar? Uh, so we should have one. And here we can see that we have one. Okay, it's cool, it's working. And finally, we're going to call the function baz. And the function baz is going to return two. 
Yes. Okay, so I have demonstrated how polymorphism works in uh, Solidity. Okay, so now we will go back to, to our text editor and we're going to study the keyword super. So super allows you to call a function of your parent contract if you inherit from a parent. So for this, we're going to create another function in kit2 contract and this function will be bar and it's going to return a variable of type uint and instead of calling bar it's going to call super dot bar it's going to call function bar that belongs to the contract before in a hierarchy uh, in in inheritance hierarchy okay so for this back to our console and like every time that we change our contract we need to run the migrate reset command okay and we also need to uh, update the variable that points to our, our contract instance so for this, it's always the same drill. So deployed, then, and then that's how you, uh, you update your variable. Okay, and now what happened when we uh, execute get bar? get bar oh no, no no it's not correct it's not get bar it's call bar okay and now we have one okay so let's get back to the text editor so here you could have thought that it would call the function bar of the parent contract in which case it would have returned zero because the contract type value in the parent contract is zero, but actually what we got is one. So it didn't call this function in parent, but it called the bar function in kid one. Why is this? Because here we can see clearly that kid two is parent. So when I said that this super keyword will make you call a function uh, in the contract uh, before in the um, in the channel in the hierarchy chain. Actually, this is um, th this is evaluated in the context of this contract here, my contract. So because my contract inherit from kid one and kid two, when we call this function bar inside my contract, then it try to resolve by checking in the chain of inheritance. So first it checked in kid two, and in kid two here it find that there is this function bar and this function by it itself it call another function by with the keyword super so it checked before in the inheritance chain but uh, before in the inheritance chain in the context of my contract so in this case it's kid one it's not parent so i just wanted to show you a, a tricky example once you understand this example then you show that all the other ex example will be easy in comparison I know this episode was a little bit more difficult than others, so if you had some trouble to understand everything, make sure you rewatch it because it's really important to understand this concept of polymorphism in Solidity. Maybe you will use it yourself or probably that you, you will see it in other people's code. For the next episode, we're going to study how inheritance work when you want to use uh, the parent uh, contract constructor. So for example, if my contract A inherit from B, how I can call the constructor of B and pass some value. If you enjoyed this video, you can give me a like or you can share it or you can subscribe to the channel. Bye bye. See you next time.